Hey everybody, welcome to Pioneer Passport. This is the Malone University vlog that is launching right now, actually. Um, this is the first episode, so just for an overview, the goal of this vlog is just to allow you guys, viewers, whoever, prospective students, students now, um, alumni, everybody, to get to know the university better, um, the people, the places, um, personally, I'm in my first year as the graduate assistant um, in the Center for Intercultural Studies. My name is Maddie, I should probably tell you that. Um, but I'm getting to know everything better now. And we figured we would give everybody else a look at that too. So this first um, episode is actually going to highlight, my arm's getting tired, sorry I have to switch, um, the social work department. So Becca, Elizabeth, and Andy, who are absolutely incredible. Um, but we want to give you guys a glimpse into their life outside of teaching. Um, they've got some pretty cool stuff going on. So hope you enjoy getting to know them better and stay tuned over the upcoming months. We'll be doing some more of these. Thanks. Hi, I am Dr. Elizabeth Patterson Rowe and I am the director of our Center for Intercultural Studies and a professor of social work at Malone. And I just have the wonderful privilege of living in a diverse community, Summit Lake in Akron, Ohio. And this is my home behind me. And my husband and I are involved in community development in Summit Lake. And we have the great opportunity to serve with our neighbors and advocate for social and economic justice issues in our community. We have had the privilege of having some students, graduates of Malone work with us. And one of them is actually right behind me right now. Paige, there's Paige. We didn't plan that, that just worked out. <laughs> And um, and in our process of, of working together and learning together in our community, we just have a, um, a wonderful, amazing set of neighbors that are, most of them, pretty low income um, compared to our middle class communities. Um, the average um, household income in our community is about 22000 um, per household and it, per year per household. And we... Um, we have found that even though our community has a lot of uh, challenges economically, there our community is just so rich in amazing resources. Our neighbors are just so amazing when it comes to sharing with each other, advocating for each other, loving each other, which really exemplifies um, our values of loving God and loving our neighbors as ourselves. So we try to do that as we live here. And neighbor, I'm going to take you on a, a quick little tour of our, our little corner of Summit Lake. Um, we have a, an, a really cool community garden. It is fall, so it's kind of dying at this point, but we have this community garden that we have the chance to neighbor in and and grow crops um, in our neighborhood and share resources. Um, and we happen to also live right by our church. And this is our church right back here. And we worship here, worship in community with neighbors and people that care about this neighborhood. And we've had students intern with South Street Ministries. That, that organization actually inspired us to move into the neighborhood. And South Street Ministries is a really amazing ministry that um, was founded by Dwayne and Lisa Krabs. Two of their kids went to Malone and I've learned so much from them. And we wanted to join in the mission of serving and loving our community. We are involved in a lot of advocacy in the community with neighbors, not for neighbors, but with neighbors, so that our community um, can be noticed and appreciated by the city um, and with the city so the development plans can, can happen with neighbors. And our students have had such a great opportunity to learn and intern here in ways that um, help them to see what it's really like to work at the community level, to work with neighbors, and to serve um, the, the youth in our community and learn so much from the community. So, so this is just what I do when I'm not at Malone and there's amazing ways that what we're doing here links with, with our intercultural studies programs and also our social work programs. And we'd love for you to come join us in the learning and serving that we get a chance to do all over Northeast Ohio, including Summit Lake and Akron. Hello, so I'm Andy Reynolds. Um, I'm the program director and the department chair for social work at Malone University. Um, I'm out here on a beautiful evening uh, just walking around. Um, one of the things I enjoy doing is walking with my family. Uh, 
let's see, I spend a lot of time outside of work um, with my wife and with my, my son, Eli. We like to do family walks. We like to go to parks. We like to travel a lot. Um, I also like to cook and I love watching sports. Um, but my research interests that I like to do uh, actually stems from before I was a professor, I was a community mental health therapist. And so uh, one of my main research ideas that I really enjoy is the, the cost of caring for people, particularly in a therapeutic setting. So like uh, uh, what kind of emotional or physiological strain uh, goes on people when they are compassionate towards others. That's something that drives me, I'm fascinated about. Uh, what makes some people more compassionate than others? Uh, what makes some people lose their compassion? So yeah. Hello, in my office, uh, first thing in the morning, what I like to do is make a list of things that I need to do that day, people that I need to contact, uh, yeah, prepping for classes, things like that. Today, I have a research class uh, at one o'clock that I get to get ready for. Um, things in my office here, got some art back there. Uh, got the, that's an elephant chair, has little tiny elephants on it. Um, supposedly it's been here at Malone for at least uh, 20 or 30 years in a professor's office, so get to carry that on. Uh, essentials for my office, Coke Zero, um, and some sort of a snack, so check in later. So I thought I would tell you all a little bit of the history of how um, Brian and I got into foster, fostering kiddos. Um, Brian and I, when we met in 2008, uh, were talking about having a family someday and Brian mentioned that he had been in foster care and how influential that was in his family's history. In fact, he said that he was the only boy to ever be at place of his foster family's house um, and that they normally only accepted girls. So um, he had already been separated from his older brother and was about to be separated from his sister as well. And then um, his foster family ended up accepting him along with his sister so that they could be together. So we kind of decided we were going to make it our mission to um, take sibling groups, um, to keep siblings together. And um, the kiddos that we've adopted, are we call them the trio, Quentin, Isaiah, and Maya. Um, they were considered a, a hard to place sibling group because of their needs and um, made them difficult to adopt as well. But uh, that's in general what we take as far as kiddos. I think we're licensed for two to 12. I think that's right. <laughs> um, I'm not exactly 100% sure what our license says, uh, but that's kind of the general idea. So uh, we're currently on our third placement, like officially thir a third placement. We've done lots of respite in between placements. Um, and then, excuse me, like I said, our little kiddos in the middle uh, Quentin, Isaiah, and I, our second placement, we ended up adopting. So they've, they're ours officially. And then we have our little miracle baby, Bree, too. She was a wonderful, unplanned <laughs> surprise because in the midst of becoming foster parents, we found out that we probably were very unlikely to have our own children. So that was just a, a great surprise. So that's kind of how we got into fostering. <laughs> Thought you might want to know about that. So another part of being a foster parent is that your kids have lots of appointments. And so Quentin has a virtual therapy appointment today, so I'm going to show you what that looks like. And I'm trying to keep the other kids quiet, and as you can see, the playroom is a disaster. But that's okay. That's pretty normal pretty good tonight. I got the boys lots of pajamas. I got everybody something that has Cleveland Browns on it for the tailgating party. And I found some stuff for Christmas too, which was kind of a bonus that I wasn't really anticipating. So um, yeah, it's really helpful for us to shop resale stores when we have five kids to close. So this is something that we do pretty regularly, uh, just being aware of resources as a foster parent. All right, I'm back wasn't supposed to be, but I am, because I came down to the faculty office area for social work, and I realized I didn't tell you guys about Annie St. John. She's not here, clearly, um, but that's where she sits, 
and she is the administrative assistant and she absolutely runs the show um, and none of us could do what we do without her. So I wanted to make sure I gave her the shout out she deserved. So thanks, Annie, you're the best. So as prospective students, as current students, we'd love to see how you could get involved in our neighborhood or other neighborhoods like this. Um, there's so much learning that can take place outside the classroom and serving opportunities as we work to fulfill our mission at Malone University to serve the church, the community, and the world.